Hi everyone, my name is Karen, this is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my February mid-month wrap up. In the first half of February, so from the 1st through the 14th, I managed to complete a total of 8 books. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Some of these were smaller um, books. I do definitely need to keep up the pace if I'm going to finish everything that I was hoping to get to in February, but let's jump straight in now and talk about the books that I managed to complete in this first half of the month. The first book I completed in the month of February was The Poet by Michael Connolly. So this is the first book in a duology by Michael Connolly um, following the character Jack McAvoy. I picked this one up because the serial killer that's kind of is dealt with in this book called The Poet is um, it crops up quite a bit in the Harry Bosch series which I've been reading so I decided to go back and read this book so I kind of got the context. So I read this, I enjoyed it, um, I, this is I think, I think it might be the first book that Connolly um, published and it's definitely dated in terms of that. There's a lot of things going on in this like faxes and dial up internet connections and things like that. So it's definitely dated in that way. It's still really enjoyable. Um, Connolly definitely doesn't shy away from dark topics like he's not afraid to go there this book deals quite a lot with pedophilia um so if that is something that makes you uncomfortable definitely don't read this um but i did really enjoy it um in the end i gave this three and a half stars the next book i completed was the two family house by linda cohen loigman this is a book that i listened to on audio this is kind of a literary fiction story that follows um a, two families that live in a two family house so it's like one house that has a house on the bottom level and a house on the top level and the two families there's two brothers and their wives and children who live on the levels and there is this event that takes place one night that kind of changes the courses of their lives so we kind of take the story from before the event and we lead up like a little bit before and we lead up to the event and then we go for years and years kind of post this event my main issue with the story was that i just wasn't sure if the event that took place was supposed to be obvious what it was because to me it was ridiculously obvious and at first um, when I finished the story I thought because as I was reading it I was like are we not supposed to know because I totally know but then at the end I was thinking about it and I was like I think it was actually supposed to even though we knew what had happened that it was supposed to mirror that the characters in the story never really spoke about it like even the two characters who kind of know what has happened they don't ever like kind of explicitly talk about it really and so I thought it was kind of mirroring that and I thought that was really clever but then I was also reading on Goodreads for this book there were a couple of questions and anytime anyone mentioned had a question that kind of asked about this event the author had commented and was like this is a spoiler so I was like well are we not supposed to know then because it's really obvious if you're reading the story like from the beginning I like literally before the event had even happened I knew what was going to happen so I don't know. I did really enjoy it. It is a slower story. It's definitely a very character-based story, which can always be a bit slower. The characters are very well developed. I say you do follow them for years, but the author did a great job of making me really experience the characters. There was characters that I liked at the start that by the end I really, really didn't like. And the opposite as well. There was some characters at the start that I wasn't really like that fond of and by the end I really did enjoy them. So the author did a really great job. The writing was really nice. It was just kind of that one thing that I that made me really be like, I don't know what's happening. Like am I supposed to know what's going on? So in the end, I gave this 3.75 stars. I do think it's really enjoyable, um, and I definitely think it's worth checking out if it sounds like something that you might enjoy. Um, because like I said, the writing was really good, and the characters were really, really well developed. The next book I completed was City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare. This is the fourth book in the Mortal Instruments. I will say this is probably my least favorite of the series so far. I did still enjoy it. Um, I liked that this one is quite Simon-centric, because Simon is one of my favorite characters from the series. I will also say that this is quite angsty, but I feel like it's not always good angst. Like some of it is just like angst for the sake of having angst, if you kind of know what I mean. The ending was very intense. It was very, very slow to get started, I thought. And I think that may be because from what I understand, the first three books were supposed to be a trilogy and then this was written. So 
I don't know, I think maybe because of that, this was quite slow to get going. I did still really enjoy it. I gave it three and a half stars, which is the same rating I gave the first two books, um, but it was, was probably my least favorite of the series so far. So as I mentioned, I read eight books in the first half of the month, but I did also DNF a book. If you saw my TBR takedown vlog, which I will link in the cards for you if you haven't, it's really, really long, I'm sorry. But I did DNF a book during that readathon that was Flight by Neil Hentzner. I did mention this in my TBR video. This is just a random book that I bought like ages ago because it was free on Amazon. And I really, really didn't like it. I literally only read, I think it was 6%, which was the equivalent of like 25 pages, I think it worked out. So I really didn't read that much. It's very rare for me to DNF. I actually, at, until this point, hadn't DNF'd a book in about a year and a half. So I don't just DNF willy-nilly. And for me to only read that small amount and DNF, it really does speak volumes. I just, this book was not for me. It was very, very science heavy. Like the whole prologue was very like scientific. And I just, I didn't understand like half of what was going on. We then got to like chapter one, which was like the main, like it wasn't following what was happening in the prologue. And I could kind of see what was happening, like what it was about. And I just, I really didn't like it. And I could tell that I wasn't going to like it. And even though I can read ebooks quite quickly, this was a longer book, it was about 400 pages, and I just quite frankly wasn't willing to push myself through 400 pages for a book I knew I wasn't going to enjoy. So I didn't read it because I didn't read hardly any of it, but I definitely DNF'd it and will not be finishing that book at any point. Next for TBI Takedown, I listened to George by Alex Gino on audio. This is a middle grade novel about a little girl named George who well, George, who would prefer to be known as Melissa, was born as George, and she really wants to play Charlotte in the school's production of Charlotte's Web, but the teacher does not want her to be Charlotte because she believes that George Melissa is a boy. So it kind of follows that. This is a middle grade novel. I'm really happy that this book exists, and I thought that this book did an amazing job of explaining what being transgender is, because that's something that I have not had a lot of familiarity with. So even I really appreciated it as an adult. And I thought it was really great that this exists for children because it was explained in such a way that I really thought children could understand and grasp, which was really great. I really enjoyed it. It was a fun story. I'd say I'm really happy that it exists. I gave this 4.25 stars. Next, I completed Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. This is book two in the Infernal Devices series. I... I'm enjoying this trilogy so much more than I'm enjoying the Mortal Instruments. Like, I do enjoy the Mortal Instruments, but this, like, trilogy is just, like, a step above. I don't think the plot in this one was as good, I didn't think, as in the first one, but I am so connected to these characters. This book was so emotional. The love triangle in this that's going on, like, physically hurts me to read about, but in, like, the best way possible. I'm actually really upset that I know the outcome of the love triangle because I can't even imagine how much even more like, ooh, I'd be feeling if I didn't know what happens. But I just have been enjoying this so much. I can't wait to read the final book and find out how like everything happens and what like all goes down. I'm really, really enjoying this series. I gave this one 4.5 stars. Next, I completed Dirty Tricks by Emily Rodder. This is book 25 in the... Teen Power Inc. slash Raven Hills Mystery series. Now when I say that, Teen Power Inc. is what the series is called in Australia and Raven Hills Mysteries is what I believe it is called in America. I'm not sure how the publishing worked because this is a copy that I had to buy because I couldn't get in my library and this is noted as being book number five but it's book number 25 in the series in Australia which is where it was originally published and it's really interesting, as I said, this is the American copy because they're not called Team Power Inc., which is the name of their gang in the series. When I've been reading it, they're called Help for Hire, which I think is like a crapper name. So I don't know why they changed it. But anyway, this follows the gang and they are, there's a phantom in the library, in their like local library. And I think one of the reasons was such a one of my favorites when I was a kid and I still really, really enjoyed is because what the fandom does is he'll take like a book, like one of the ones he takes in the book is, what are the examples? There's, he does Alice in Wonderland at one point, the phantom um, does, and they like, someone will stumble upon and all of a sudden find like a tea, a tea party that looks like it's been abandoned with a copy of Alice in Wonderland. Or like there was a one, oh my god, there were so many in here, what else happened? Like there was one, a book about the teddy bears picnic and there were teddy bears, um, like, you know, climbing and looking like they were having fun. And there was one, a book open about 
um, diseases, like a non-fiction book, and it had like red dots all over it, like as if to look like a measles and a thermometer coming out of it, and that's the kind of tr like tricks that the Phantom plays, and that just spoke to me volumes because I would have loved as a kid to go into a library and like stumble across one of these like Phantom tricks. So I really, really enjoyed this. Um, in the end, I gave this one 4.25 stars. Next we have the last book that I completed for TBR Takedown and that is Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. This is I think book 10 in the Hercule Poirot series. Um, I have seen the mo a movie adaptation of this um, a while ago before I, I think before I even started reading the series. So I knew the outcome of the mystery in this which is a little bit sad because I think I would have enjoyed this much much more if I didn't know how it was all going to end. That's not to say that I didn't enjoy this because I really, really did. Um, I love just like the way Agatha Christie like unfolds a mystery. Um, so I really, really enjoyed this. Um, I gave it 4.25 stars. I did have a bit of a problem with one of the aspects of justice and like kind of a decision about justice that was made in this that I just, I didn't really agree with. Um, but I did really enjoy this. As I said, I gave this 4.25 stars. The final book I completed in the first half of February was Hot Pursuit by Emily Rodder. So this is book 26 in the series. This one was enjoyable. Um, not my favourite of the series or anything. I This one follows El Elmo as the narrator and I do really love Elmo as a character and as a narrator. I say so it was enjoyable, not my favourite, but I gave this one 3.5 stars. So those are the books that I managed to complete in the first half of February. Have you read any of these books? If you have any thoughts about any of them, I would love to chat down below or what you've been managing to read in the first half of February. I'd love to chat down below. I really um, am hoping to get a lot more read in the second half of February. I have already completed a book in the second half of February and I'm in the middle of three others. So hopefully I can really like keep the pace rolling and get through a lot in the second half of February. Because if you saw my TBR, it was enormous. Anyway, I would love to chat with you guys in the comments. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. But that's all I've got for this video today. Bye, guys.